Welcome to another video. This week, we're climbing up some stairs. This is the view from the top of the stump or St. Botolph's Church in Boston. It's a long way down. And here we can see the Vista mooring. So the Naughty Lass is moored just beyond that lock, quite close to the train station and Asders. So my first goal with Boston is not to visit a supermarket, it is to find out how many links have survived between this British town and the better known American city. So just walking down the 365 steps to, to get back down from the tower, which is no easy task, um, you can see inside the church, it's absolutely amazing. And this is not a cathedral or an abbey. Um, I tried to look into why, but some of the locals just told me it was because Lincoln didn't want it to be a cathedral. <laughs> so. But this is where the Massachusetts Bay colonists um, originated from, led by this man who's Reverend John Cotton. He was a really, really popular guy, not just with seagulls on top of his head, but uh, with locals who flocked from all around to hear his sermons and followed him all the way across to America. And I'm afraid that is all I could find that linked uh, Boston in the UK to Boston in America. There may be a lot more to it, but it just doesn't seem to be on, on display. There was this Masonic Hall that um, is based on a Nubian temple, that the original of which is now in the New York Metropolitan Art Museum. And here's an original painting to show you what it looks like. Back in more recent times, um, you can't talk about Boston without mentioning Brexit because 75% of people here voted to leave the EU, um, something that I think was quite upsetting for the huge migrant population of Polish, Lithuanian, Romanian workers who have set up shops, they've, they've got kids at school here, that, you know, it's not, it's not about money getting sent back to Europe, it's all being spent here as well, so the economy has actually boosted quite a lot. Another thing that's quite upsetting for the locals, I think, is there's so many nice buildings in Boston, but no one's really doing anything with them. You know, you look on the outside, it looks lovely, peer through the windows, and it's just an empty room. Really, really sad. Uh, I don't know what it is, just lack of money perhaps in the area. There's certainly more of a market for Poundland stores than there is for these lovely old buildings. Anyway, I'm gonna stop my middle-class whinging and let you enjoy the sounds and sights of Boston. Right, enough of all that, it's time for Pub of the Week! First off, this pub, I want to give them a little bit of love because they belong to Bateman's Brewery where they whack the prices up on the barrels if you're doing well. Now, I've picked this pub because it's one to watch, I think. 
uh, on the jukebox, we've got lots of alternative music. It's going to become a bit more of a live venue. It's what Boston needs. It also really needs more people like Rianne here. She was the nicest person I met in the town. But unfortunately, she works in a different pub. But fortunately, that pub is Pub of the Week. So this is inside the pub. You've got the pool table there, you've got the jukebox. Pretty banging, except when you have a power cut. <laughs> This actually happened, and just listen now to just some of the conversations. This is a pub in a power cut. The power cut just, it seemed to just happen um, on one side of the street, because the other side of the street was, was all fine, but yeah, it was just um, out for a, an hour or so. Um, it was just nice to see a bit of an old-fashioned feel to a pub, really. This is how it would have been back in the old days. Well, except we're all checking the scores on our phone, of course. But aside from the atmosphere, what really makes this pub of the week is that it, it really does cater for everyone. So you've got... You've got the pool table, you've got the jukebox, you've got um, the amazing selection of beers. And the pub patrons themselves, all really nice people, so a real good mix. So I definitely recommend this pub to anyone visiting. Walking at quite a pace back to the boat here, um, through Boston's back streets. We should, in a minute, come up to where the bridge is that crosses the lock between the river Witham and um, the estuary that feeds on towards the wash. And I know a lot of people will ask me, hello, did I try to cross the wash and try and get on some of the other waterways? Because if you look on the map here, blue line here that goes to the actual wash, and you're going to be trying to get across there all the way over to here or here. So that's Whiz Beach or Kings Lynn. And I spoke to a guide, and the guide told me that in winter it's really quite difficult because of the well because a the fact that my narrowboat doesn't have the navigation lights on the sides doesn't have like green and red lights that you're supposed to have for um certainly if you want to travel at night and because the days are so short in the winter and the journey is so long so it's about i think it's about 10 hours the whole trip with the break in between and also the break in between is a lovely little stop on a beach if you if you sort of make good good enough progress and knowing my boat I'd be lagging behind. So I don't think I would have enjoyed it. And the guide was saying, no, I really want people to enjoy it. Um, and also there's a cost involved. So he, this guide I was talking to, Daryl, although I'll leave his number in the, um, com in, the, in the description below if you want to call him and book a pilot. So basically he would come out with you in his boat to take you across. And the cost that he quoted me was around 230 odd pounds for a, uh, for one boat and then a little bit extra for two but you know you'd save with more boats involved up to about four and then you start you know he has to hire an another guy to help out so um, definitely worth g doing it with other people and also even if I wanted to go do you know what happened while I was in Boston that's right the beast from the east hit uh, it's like a Siberian storm a snowstorm that came over and uh, made it pretty unpleasant but I was quite relieved really because I didn't really want to go out into the wash on my own in winter. Um, much rather wait for summer and um, really enjoy the journey rather than just doing it just so I could tick it off my list. Here's the, well, just a few moorings by the lock but they're not for any, any sort of long term use just for the, using the lock. But the facilities point is just by this lock which is a little bit... I mean, they're great. It got great showers and great toilets and everything, but yeah, a little bit far away from the actual moorings, which are probably another five minutes walk away. And here they are. And I just want to, I mean, these moorings here are one of the best in the country I've seen because they're floating moorings. They, you know, there's lots of space there. There's water points. All everything you need, and it's just really, really nice and quiet. Have a listen to this. And good quality moorings aren't complete unless you've got a couple of dogs running around. <laughs> and these two kept meeting me every day when I came back to the boat. 
and um, yeah, just generally lovely people here as well. So yeah, all good. Oh, right, so that was Boston, and this is the Cranky Crew. Right, the first name I need to add to my logbook is Matthew Wicks. Matt, thank you so much for supporting the vlog. Very much appreciated. And then I've got to welcome Brian Jones to the crew. Thank you, sir. Thanks for supporting the vlog. And uh, yeah, Brian, you're the last one on that page. So we're gonna have to start a whole new Cranky Crew sheet. Here we go. The first on this new page is Kitty Oskin. Thank you so much, Kitty. And also, thank you for donating in the recent charity walk I did, uh, where we raised 780 pounds. And that was all in aid of Greenfingers Children's Charity and Crank It crew members and supporters of the vlog. You've all been amazingly generous on that one, so thank you once again. Next, we've got Dimitrios Theologitis. Thanks so much for sponsoring the vlog and welcome to the Crank It crew. And now moving on to producers of the vlogs, this is the next level up. Um, we've got, I've got, I'm very happy to welcome once more George Blankenship. George, thank you so much for stepping up to producer level and all your previous support in the vlog. It's much, much appreciated. And now we need to turn back to the the previous page and give a massive shout out to Lotus Petal. Uh, Chris, thank you so much for stepping up to producer level. I, 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 it's absolutely amazing, I really appreciate it. Cheers, dude. This next one's very, very special because this young lady's birthday is round about this time. I hope I haven't missed it by too far. Your lovely husband has set this up for you. So basically, Sophie Rothero, you are now a Crank It Crew producer, and I suppose Tommy is, is as well. Congratulations, the pair of you. I hope you enjoy your newfound status. And that's it for the shout outs to the Patreon crew. Thanks so much for supporting me. Anyway, that's Boston. The rest of the river, the rest of the river, uh, I can't even say. <laughs> the rest of the river with them is coming up in the next video. Here's a few shots of what you can expect. Bye.